Half-Life 1 on Dreamcast was developed by Gearbox and Captivation Digital Labs, with Captivation handling the porting itself, while Gearbox focused on the content. However, the port was delayed multiple times and eventually cancelled due to changing market conditions, aka because the Dreamcast was being discontinued. Gearbox also developed all of Half-Life's expansions, while Opposing Force was released on PC, Blue Shift was intended to be included with the Dreamcast port. Since the port fell through, Blue Shift was moved to PC. The Dreamcast version has leaked twice before, once in 2003 where the build was dated a month before its last actual release date, and again in 2018 where the build is dated two months before that release date. The footage in this video is the 2018 leak build. This version was leaked in GDI format as opposed to CDI format, basically meaning it wasn't compressed to fit on a consumer CD. I wanted this video to focus on the PS2 version, but the history of the Dreamcast version is also the history of the PS2 port so let's get into it. This version of Half-Life along with the PS2 version are based on the 1.0 version of the 1 PC version as indicated by the retained head bobbing. The Dreamcast version's levels have significantly longer load times throughout them. There's also an issue with saving where the blocks required to save get larger the further into the level you are. There's no auto saves anymore either. On the flip side, this version is compatible with the Dreamcast mouse and keyboard peripherals. This version has an auto aim feature if if you use a controller, it's hard to get it to aim at which enemy on screen you want it to if there's more than one, but it is very strong auto-aim nonetheless. And given the Dreamcast's lack of a second analog stick and generally unorthodox controls here, at least by today's standards, it's appreciated and sort of necessary. So, so long as enemies are on screen, just give it a sec to home in and you're good. To accommodate for controller aiming, some enemies were simply removed in addition to enemies and weapons stats being tweaked. Additionally, the long jump mechanic utilized with the booster was changed into a double jump. Several quality of life changes were made. The UI now indicates whether you are walking or sprinting, and if you hold the jump button long enough, you'll automatically crouch jump. While there's no legitimately accessible console for commands, there are cheat codes available. You can use them to enable god mode, slow motion, invisibility, infinite ammo, low gravity, and have all weapons. And cheats to immediately start at any level in the game. A separate low gravity cheat can be unlocked, but not actually used. The Dreamcast port has has its own bugs, but there were reportedly attempts to patch some legacy bugs from the PC version. For example, you can still manipulate NPCs to move, but they won't unlock doors anymore just by being budged. There is a cheat in the Prima Strategy Guide that had still got printed and shipped to enable Zen Gravity anywhere, but this cheat doesn't actually work. The Dreamcast version has vastly overhauled character, weapon, and enemy models and textures, as well as some subtle environment, level geometry, and lighting updates. Notably, things are a smidge darker and flashlights aren't as bright, though the difference is a little hard to notice. I also found that the Dreamcast VMU unit can appear as a piece of possible debris among computer parts. While the Dreamcast is capable of 16x9 games, the 16x9 option works like it does in the original version of Half-Life, meaning it just provides a measly crop. The assets for the Dreamcast version served as the groundwork for the PC version's high definition pack, and then that HD pack served as the groundwork for the PS2 version. A year after the cancellation of Half-Life on Dreamcast, Half-Life was shown on PS2. At this point, Captivation went under and Blue Shift was already released on PC. However, Half-Life on PS2 did ship with Half-Life Decay, a split-screen co-op expansion. And it stars the other two scientists and the other two HEV suits, besides Gordon's. There's also a secret demo expansion in this version too. If you have on hand the PlayStation Underground June 2002 demo disc, you can input this cheat code in Half-Life, swap the disc, and you'll be able to play Half-Life Uplink, which is a demo loosely based on the cut chapter of Half-Life with all new levels. While multiplayer never came to fruition in the Dreamcast version, the PS2 version of Half-Life does at least have split-screen deathmatch and features an unused map from the Dreamcast version. The PS2 version still has frequent loading, but the load times were cut down substantially. Additionally, there is a quick save feature, which helps make up for the lack of autosaves. But yes, there is still no autosaves, so be sure to save frequently. This version also introduces these brackets that highlight things you can interact with now. The PS2 version is actually still compatible with USB keyboards and mice. 
The gameplay balance changes remain too, however, auto-aim was overhauled a bit. You'll see enemies highlighted, but you'll need to hit the circle button to actually home in on your target now. Along with these changes, the game's hazard course was overhauled and updated a bit. All of the prior cheat codes return, including the now functional Zen Gravity cheat. You've also got Alien Mode and a code to unlock all of the Decay missions, though this code actually requires two controllers to input. There's no codes for individual levels of the main campaign anymore either. While Half-Life on PS2 still has plenty of quirks and bugs, like weapons start out totally maxed out on ammo when you first pick them up for some reason, bugs found in the Dreamcast version were reportedly ironed out. The PAL version of Half-Life on PS2 was reportedly even further refined to bugs with slight level tweaks as well. There's various clips and skips that were fixed from additional invisible walls, along with NPCs no longer being manipulated simply by budging them anymore, but it doesn't mean you can't get out of bounds still. The visuals have been further refined beyond the PC version's HD pack. Characters in the PS2 version now have more detailed hands, eye tracking, and facial animations. Chargers on the walls are now fully modeled and animated too. Most models and the lighting in general were significantly overhauled compared to the Dreamcast port, including environment details. The PS2 version also incorporated an LOD system to accommodate the higher quality the assets. Frame rates still aren't totally stable, but at least they're more stable than before. The PS2 version also features new main menu music, and on the disc there's voice outtakes and bloopers, along with a few accommodating animations for the voice lines that you may have possibly seen adapted and put into video form on YouTube already. Good morning, Gorman. Crap. Nobody tell Gabe, okay? So this port has been covered by other channels and you may have already seen their videos and I would recommend watching their stuff as well, I just wanted to give my flavor of coverage for it too. Other Valve games on my radar are Half-Life 2 for the original Xbox and Portal for the PS3. And if you didn't already know about Half-Life on PS2 or Dreamcast or the several expansions and, and where they were and everything, now you do know. Now in the meantime though, there's plenty of modding projects to showcase and of course comprehensive port reviews to do. You can find me on Patreon and Twitter with updates on what I'm working on, and until next time, thank you for watching.